So today, we're going to be talking about some basing techniques. You're going to be building a pretty fancy base, not like a normal gaming base. Yeah, yeah, this is a, uh, well, I guess you'd term this as a display plinth, but uh, I think that the technique can be applied to your average base easily. So there's just more room to work on a plinth, and for the sake of video, we're doing a little more fancy. It looks good. It looks good. So I'm looking forward to people being able to see it because it's, it's, uh, it's something that I think a lot of people don't realize how easy it can be to do and how the materials can be pretty cheap too. So it's yeah, it's it's pretty simple. I mean, a lot of the objects I'm using are just found objects from nature, just digging up roots and and soil and slapping it all together. Uh, it kind of looks natural when you just slap things together <laughs> like that. So how strange. With some, with some skeletons, of course. Well, you know, yeah, you everything's got to have skeletons. Yeah. Everything's better with skulls, as we all know. It is a war game. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Hey, everybody. Everyone in the Tabletop Minions channel. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and build that base. This could be used on a flat base or uh, a plinth like I'm going to show you guys. I mean, this is intended for more of a display quality, so... It's going to be on a plinth here, but uh, yeah. So first thing you need to, do, need to do is acquire a plinth, different places to get them online. I got this from a friend who is a pattern maker at, their, uh, at his wood shop. He ends up with a lot of extra scraps, and to get that, that angle, just a Dremel tool. Kind of curve things downward, and it feeds into the overall composition of the model in the end. But uh, So first, yeah, you, have to, you want to plot out your plinth, and if you want to remove any of that, and uh, the next step, I mean, obviously there's a little pre-thought in this. I wanted a pile of skeletons. My whole concept was this warrior kind of lives on the edge of the woods, and he's coming now to uh, the civilized world, and it's represented by, you know, the remnants of warfare, as, as I see it. So, yeah, just creating a little narrative, always important. But, um, yeah, obviously you see the, the next step would be to lay down some putty. Instead of trying to hack up the skeletons and glue them at all different angles, I found it easier just to smush them into the putty. I mean, there's so many different ways to go about basing. We'll probably do more videos on this, but uh, this is just a sprue of skeletons from War Games Factory. You can kind of see uh, they're nice and plain. They're not too too lumpy and clunky like some other lines of skeletons. So, and then you see some secret weapon skulls in there. Some other bits I got from a uh, cool mini. Um, yeah, so that was the, the basic idea for step one of the, that base. And then, um, so when you're making the base, you want to keep the model in the, in the center of the base. So beforehand, I was placing the model like so, just to kind of see where his head is going to wind up. And yeah, the, so the uh, next step on this base was adding the little slope of cork that he's standing on to kind of add to that, that diagonal angle there you can see it kind of overhangs off the back um, yeah let's see if I can stab the model in here so you can kind of see where, where his feet are winding up there the uh, placement like so it's kind of a tight angle but uh, you get the drift um, so why I placed the I just want to show you guys why I placed the skeletons in the way that I did in relation to the, the pose of the model. Composition is always important. And to me, I looked at the model and he, he's tall and slender, his, his legs kind of come far apart. I know everything's blending a little bit now, but once it's painted, it'll, it'll be a lot different. But you can see I've got some uh, various swords and spears that are kind of stabbed into the, the victims here. And that creates kind of a, a V axis that matches, that's gonna match up with his feet, kind of creating an X and then with the uh, flat plane of his sword. Basically, all these um, the elements on the base are pointing upwards towards the miniature and kind of framing it, and uh, almost like you would in a comic book. How you have the foreground, the the midground, and the background. That's I always try to apply that to the process. But uh, yeah, just a quick note about composition. Um, let's see. I just want to show you guys like the all the different materials I intend to use while we, while we're doing this far away shot. There's just some. Um, metal brackets there that kind of work their way into the skeleton pile. Got these skeletons from uh, War Games Factory in case anyone's wondering where I got them from. Some uh, dirt, that's driveway dirt as I call it, it's that crushed up gravel that 
if you're lucky enough not to have a paved driveway, then get down with that gravel. And if you're also lucky enough to have plants in your yard, you can go tear them out of the ground and dry out the roots and use them as tiny little trees when they're turned upside down, which come into play later. I just want to show you guys all the different stuff. I ended up, uh, I grabbed these bricks too from Secret Weapon. Didn't really need them. I thought I'd get a little cluttered, but whatever. I'm always pulling different things. And then uh, at the very end, I plan on adding some flowing, flopping grass, you know. I want, like I said, I wanted him emerging from, you know, a meadow, a peaceful place with his big sword, so. All right, so step two, as it were. Now I've adhered all my materials to the base. And uh, as we were saying in the break, I've built my cake and it's time to add the frosting. So it's not your typical frosting. This is white glue. So I'm just gonna kind of paint it around all the, the skeletons I'm going to also kind of take advantage here of covering up some of the, the joins on the skeletons. I know they're, they're a little loose, they're supposed to be dead, and I intended on them kind of being submerged like, you know, it's, they've been laying here for a while and, and, you know, dirt collects. So, yeah, I'll just be painting this with uh, the white glue and then adding that precious driveway dirt to the mix show you guys quick. I just like this stuff because it has a variety of textures. You have small pebbles and all the way down to like kind of dusty fine particles. But yeah, it's gonna work like that. Um, I'm gonna snap my fingers and this is gonna be done. All right, we're back. So I uh, applied all the, the grit and whatnot to the base and you can kind of see the benefits of the frosting as we defined in the uh, and the last step, you know, the, uh, the cork is disappearing. You see no more putty. It doesn't look all smooth and whatnot. So that's the base coming along. And the next step, and you see I've got the two white dots there. That's just uh, to keep the miniature in mind. His feet are going to be going there. Because my next, my plan is, like I was saying, I wanted him coming out of a forest. So I kind of want to create like a, a fade of twigs and shrubbery. So to do that, uh, I'll be using those dried roots that, that I showed you in the beginning and I'm just going to take my X-Acto, stick it into the cork like so, kind of make a pilot hole. And then I got a little piece of root carefully selected. It's going to slide in there and with the assistance of some super glue, it will be in place and I'm going to slowly add more uh, taller roots to the background to kind of create a backdrop for the miniature to be standing against. So I'm going to add some roots and we'll be right back. All right, we're back for the third and final step, unofficial third. I haven't really been counting those many steps in this process, but here you can see the uh, end result before I decide to prime it and paint it. Got that little fade going on with the um, shrubbery. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's going to cradle the miniature quite nicely. I'll show you how he fits in there. There. So that's going to be a cool mini when it's finally finished off. But uh, yep. That's base building. There's a lot of materials in a lot of ways. This probably won't be the only base building video that we do. But um yeah, I just want to show you the first step in that process. So I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll be back with more. Thanks to everybody at the Tabletop Minions crew. And I'm Samson. You can see my work at samsonminis.blogspot.com. I'll see you around.